properly select the right mounting system and to do an efficient job on the roof, it's really important to understand roof construction of the roof you're working with. So we're talking about comp shingle roofs today um, and understanding the anatomy of a roof and understanding how it's built and how the construction is done uh, will better suit you for not only site visits but also working with the with the roof type and pulling nails and things like that that are involved in the installation of a solar racking system. Um, so common roof types in the residential space are obviously comp shingle, which we're talking about today in this uh, video series, and also tile, metal, stone-coated steel you run into, wood shake, slate. Uh, we'll have more information on all those types, but today we're gonna talk about comp shingle roofs. Um, and so the way that these are built and the way the roofing industry um, identifies roof types are typically in two categories of steep slope roofs and low slope roofs. Um, steep slope roofs are the common residential roof types that I just mentioned, comp shingle for sure. Uh, and then low slopes are those TPO, EPDM, more commercial roof types that you see. And the way that these are, are split up uh, in the roofing industry are typically by the manufacturer uh, referring to steep slope and low slope by the degree and the pitch of the roof. So this is a good image showing you the different ways that we determine pitch and, and degree. It's either in that fraction of you know 2 and 12, 4 and 12, or 15, uh, 18, whatever you're, 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 the way you're describing it. So this is a good image that just gives you the, all that terminology. So a three and 12 pitched roof is gonna be about a 14 degree pitched roof. So that will be on the site plans. Uh, you'll typically see the pitch or the steep or the grade and, and that way you can determine you know, what equipment do you need. Maybe it's better for a full on racking system as opposed to maybe a rail free system that might be harder to install on a steeper slope. Or maybe you wear different shoes when you get onto a steeper slope. So understanding the slope is good and the roofing industry you know, identifies between low slope and, low, and steep slope. And usually that transition from steep to low slope is about that two and 12 pitch. And so here's a good example. Uh, again, it's based on manufacturers. So comp shingle uh, manufacturers will have a, a limit of where their shingles can be installed uh, and what that slope can be. So here's a good example. You see B there in the back has the steep slope where it's probably about a maybe four and 12 uh, roof, just guessing, uh, and that's typical for a shingled roof. But where you look at that bottom roof down there, that A section, that is a lower slope, probably around two and 12 or maybe even less, which is too low for the shingles for most manufacturers, some of them vary. Uh, so there you can see they did the right thing where they have shingles on the steep slope roof in the back there. And then at the lower slope roof, it is a uh, rolled asphalt that is not shingled. So that's a, a good installation of the roof. Um, I have seen where shingles are put on too low of a slope and the installer came and just assumed that it was installed correctly and they had some roof uh, leak issues once they made penetrations in the roof and the winter came. So water intrusion doesn't hope happen overnight. It takes time to seep in and show some visible damage. So that this is a good example of where you want to understand where uh, right around that two and 12 um, slope is where you're gonna, you're gonna start seeing uh, shingles not be the right application. So just make sure you understand uh, the slopes of different roof types, especially on comp shingle. Um, so the different roof types that are out there, you can see here there's all kinds of hip gabled uh, roofs and there's, they vary in, in different regions all over the world. Um, but it's good to know that ASC 716 now does define uh, wind zones uh, and roof zones more, um, there's more definition in them and it does, it does have that distinction between hipped roofs and gabled roofs. So you can see that in almost every uh, roof manufacturer's guidelines or best practices uh, but for roofing because they abide by those rules as well in certain regions. 
So understanding the terminology is really good too. So comp shingle roofs are fairly simple, but whether you're new to the industry or you're, you're a seasoned guy and you're training your crew, this information is good to know so you could speak the same language. And there's a, lot of, there's a lot of roofing involved when it comes to solar installation. Just looking at the roof and determining if it's you know, qualified to have a PV system that's gonna last 25 years is a whole nother thing that we'll talk about in site visits. But understanding the terminology is really key. So here we have a basic roof. There's actually a hip and a gable there. Uh, and you can point them out, um, but the anatomy of roof is what we're gonna talk about here and just get into some of the roofing basics. So rafters or the truss system, that's obviously something you need to know because you're gonna be going into those trusses uh, for the most part. Sometimes you go into the decking and we'll talk about that here in a second. So you got the rafters or the truss system. Um, the trusses are typically, if sometimes you see prefab trusses uh, and they're they're pre-engineered and you might see those craned in like you see in this picture here. Uh, but going back to the, the terminology, so you got rafters, you got trusses, then you're gonna have rafter bays. That's just good to know because sometimes you might wanna identify the rafters where you might say to your, your colleague, you might say, hey, can you see the rafter bays sticking out? And you might see the rafters and that's gonna help you see how far apart they are. Rafters are typically 16 or 24 inch on center. Obviously the construction can be different once they get there. There's probably just like PV installations, there's plans. Sometimes things don't go according to plan and there's different spacing between rafters. So you're gonna wanna find the rafter obviously. And we have a whole video on finding rafters. We talk about that topic in multiple sections in this series. Um, the next thing obviously is the sheeting. So the decking. Uh, it's typically a plywood or an OSB ply. Um, there's different thicknesses of that and we'll talk about that and where the importance is there in a second. Uh, and then underlayment will be on top of the plywood and then you'll have shingles on top of that. So some other things to understand and that's good to know here are like things like edge flashings where you might have metal going across the bottom of the edge or maybe at the side where you've got the rake. Um, so you got shingles and then you also have the fascia, um, but you also have things like the ridge at the top. And then as I mentioned, the eave and the rake, those are the different things you wanna know as well. So the ridge is pretty self-explanatory. It's at the, at the top there. You don't ever wanna step on the ridge. Uh, sometimes I've seen guys stepping on the ridge, but you can cause some damage there. So you wanna make sure you stay away from that. Sometimes there's little vents built underneath uh, the ridge cap. So you want to make sure that you don't step on that or crush that. Um, and then the eave is where the gutter is down there. Um, and then the rake is the side on the side of the roof. So this is just helpful to know. So if you're saying like that module at the, at the rake or face the racking to the ridge and not the eave, that will help you understand the terminology that we're talking about here. So this is just some of the basics so you can understand uh, what we're talking about. And then again, hips, uh, these are just good to know when, when, you're, when you're going to these roofs and, and what you're dealing with. So as I mentioned, trusses, you can see there's a prefab truss where they're bringing it in. Um, sometimes they're just individual rafters, uh, but you do get trusses. So I'm just showing some different examples here. So, um, and then the plywood, going back to the plywood. So here's a good example of, uh, this is just a house, uh, my friend's neighbor, uh, they were installing the roofing and it's a perfect time to take pictures. So plywood is typically, there's different thicknesses and it's you know regionally based really. They have some requirements in certain areas, uh, half inch, three quarter inch, just depends on where you're, where you are. Um, but sheets of plywood are typically in eight foot by four foot sections. And so they lay those down in, in sort of landscape and then they cut them to match up and meet at the, at the rafters, that you, like you can see there. Um, so the reason I bring this up is because they almost always are going up those, those four feet. And so when you go up, you're gonna have a seam there. And the reason I bring this up is we talked about rafter and deck attachments. And if you hit a seam when you're going into the decking, we test our products for deck attachments into the weakest possible, which is uh, I think 716 OSB. Um, so 
that is tested for pull out and shear. So if you have something thicker or better quality, you're pretty good to go. And then obviously we put safety factors on that as, as the manufacturer. But what I'm getting at is when you have that four foot increment of the ply, you can determine if you drive a, a, a screw into a de in, for a deck mounting system and the screw spins, then you're gonna probably be going into the seam. And so that's why you see some of our products have the offset holes so that you're not going, if you hit the, the seam in one section, the other one's gonna grab onto, onto that wood a little bit more solid. So if you hit a seam, you will know, you can typically measure and find out if it's four, if it's in four foot increments based on that plywood, which is standard off the shelf. So they only cut it um, to match them to the rafter, but going up, they, they stay four feet. So just good to know how the plywood's laid down. Construction is up, so if you see a, a building like this getting built or a home, you'll understand, you'll see it, and it will give you some better insight on what to look for. Going back to the underlayment that goes on top of the plywood, there's different types of underlayment. So the most tried and true that's been installed forever is felt paper. And it's still being installed today under a lot of different roof types. So comp shingle, tile, metal, just depends. Uh, but under a comp shingle roof, like you see there, there's gonna be that shiny black. It's, it's basically paper that's impregnated with felt. Um, so it has uh, asphalt, sorry, it's impregnated with asphalt. Um, so it's an asphalt material product um, and it's designed to kind of shed the water out. Not so good for pooling water, um, but so that underlayment is a, either a 15 or 30 pound felt. Um, and that's pretty common with roofers. Some roofers like these newer products that are a synthetic underlayment. So synthetic underlayment, if you ever see construction being done and you see like a white, like you see in this picture here, uh, you see like a white underlayment underneath the shingles, um, you'll, you'll notice, or, or some print on it from a company, a manufacturer, that's typically a, a kind of fabric and there's kind of technology in there for shedding out water that's a little bit more advanced than felt paper. Um, so different roofers like different things. Some like the tried and true felt paper. Some prefer a synthetic underlayment. There might be warranties in place that mandate this underlayment. So this is good to know. And this goes into our site visit uh, section. Um, but the last type of underlayment is an adhered underlayment. So in Florida where there's a lot of high wind, they sometimes mandate a adhered kind of peel and stick um, um, underlayment that's glued down to the actual roof type. So you might hear someone say Grace Ice and Water Shield or Ice and Water Shield. Those are just brands and products, but you might see some print on there and it might be glued down. So that's gonna change maybe how you're mounting, uh, what you're mounting, what type of mount, uh, but it's just good to know. And then those shingles that are in the lower slope category, um, or maybe it's just a certain pitch where roof manufacturers, comp shingle roof manufacturers will say when you get to a certain lower uh, pitch, they may mandate these types of adhered uh, underlayment. So just good to know. And then you got the different types of shingles. So, and the different types of shingles are covered in our shingle section. We break the three most popular down in that next video series. Uh, but just talking about shingling, uh, more importantly, it's good to see how these are nailed in. So shingles are put down um, with, they're layered down. And if you look at the picture where you have the, the, you see kind of this pyramid shape, they call that stacking. Different shingles have different ways to install it. Once you get a bundle, you can actually look at the back and there's instructions on it. And typically they recommend cutting down certain sizes. So you lay down full shingles all the way across. There's, there's gonna be a starter course, then they're gonna run the shingles. Uh, and all the way across, and then they'll start pyramid shaping it up. That way, once they go across, then they can use the full shingle lengths, and then you get seams all around uh, in different patterns, and it offsets the seams. So this is covered a little bit more in the different uh, comp shingle types that we talked about in those separate videos, but just understanding the nail line uh, is good. So when you lay down a shingle, 
you're gonna put down, the, the, the roofer is nailing down typically with a gun. I mean, old school is putting it in with a hammer. But as you can see here in our training roof, when we built that, uh, we have Ryan here who was putting that together and you can see him nailing in a shingle on our training roof and we did this like a roofer would. So these nails are put in, in this nail line section here and there's sometimes a, 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 a nail line marked out so you put your nails in that section and there's either gonna be four or sometimes six nails across, maybe more depending on the, the, the wind zone in that area. Uh, they may, if that's in uh, Florida, for example, they might want more nails in. If you're in California in a low, lower uh, wind zone, wind area, you may only need four. But those nails going into that shingle is also gonna be nailed in so when you stack the next shingle and you nail that one in, it's going at the top of that. So if you're removing a shingle, uh, for a damaged shingle, you wanna pop out a couple different nails to pull that one shingle out and you can replace one shingle in the middle of a roof. There's just a kind of a specific way to do that which we can show you in another video. Um, so understanding the nails are good in the nail pattern because you're gonna be installing flashing, uh, sometimes metal flashing that need to go in between the shingles. So if you go back to our video about flashing placement, you know that there's uh, courses and in that video we talk about as you can see here there's a flashing installed properly and there's a flashing installed improperly so most common mistake you see is metal flashings getting put up into the shingle hitting the nail and then they just install it there and it, it's overlapping it might fall on a seam there's some potential for water intrusion in there and again we talk about that in in the flashing placement uh, video, but just understanding the coursing, the nailing, and this is what you call a, a reveal. So they'll either call it a course or a reveal, and those are typically in five inch increments, which is why a flashing is a metal flashing on a comp shingle roof is typically uh, 12 inches high, so that if you have it sitting flush on the bottom edge of the drip edge, then you have the the five, 10, and then you have two inches of going into the nail line so you're fully waterproof. So just understanding the nails, the construction, and how these are built, uh, this will better suit you and your team and how to install uh, flashings and understanding where flashings are and it's selecting the right product. Um, the last part of the, of the whole anatomy of a roof is you're gonna have the hips, or uh, sorry, the, you're gonna have the ridge caps or hip caps. And again, those are built in different ways and sometimes you do have, uh, you do have some uh, vents under there and you want to make sure you're not stepping on that. Lastly, the attic space. This is gonna vary different based on the construction of the home. Um, every installer's worst day is usually crawling in a tiny little attic with no space. And as you can see in this picture here, which was a friend of mine's house, and we were doing an install in his house, and he wanted to be the one to crawl in the attic. And there's a certain way to step through uh, in an attic. So if you've got a lot of insulation in there, sometimes there might be some toxic old asbestos. You want to avoid that. Wear a mask, a headlamp, uh, goggles. Make sure you're following OSHA standards. But these days, they, do, they don't do toxic materials in there anymore. It might just be some blow in insulation. But the point is, is that insulation is holding in the temperature of the house. And sometimes there's boards in there across the rafters. So you don't do what my buddy did there. And he stepped through the uh, sheet rock and he broke through. He didn't fall. He just broke it and it fell through uh, in the garage. No one was hurt. Uh, but there's different ways to crawl in around the attic. You obviously want to wear a flashlight, uh, headlamp, you know, goggles or glasses and a mask um, and long sleeves so you don't get itchy from any of the, the insulation. Uh, but you might have an attic space that's really huge. You might have a really small one, uh, but that's where you're either running conduit or wires and, and some try to avoid that by running conduit on the roof, but some who want to hide the conduit will go into the attic, just a part of the game and the install process. So just going over the basics, and if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to us, and you'll see it in the next videos, we have more specifics on comp shingle types and everything I mentioned as far as finding rafters and things like that. So thanks for joining us here.